guys welcome back so as you know in this series of tutorial we are covering this keyword and this particular tutorial also cover one of the another most important use of this keyword called constructor chaining so in this particular tutorial we are basically focusing on what is constructor chaining how the constructor chaining works and then we're gonna see uh, how the constructor chaining can be used in your real-time project I mean whenever you're creating a classroom project or you're doing any real time project how you can use the constructor chaining I mean as a part of your project and then we're gonna see the disadvantage the limitation of this keyword corresponding to constructor chaining so a lot of good things in the store so let's go ahead and explore it so constructor chaining right the chain of constructors so guys as you know in your class you may create multiple number of constructors right but whenever you're creating the object of a particular class only one particular constructor is being called right but you know using constructor chaining you can call multiple number of constructors while you're creating the object and that's what constructor chaining is so the first let's see example how the constructor chaining works how you can call multiple number of constructor while you're creating the object of a particular class so let's go ahead and see a particular example which will give you a good handle to understand what constructor chaining is so guys let's create a class first let's say our class name is a right so let's create a class here called class a right and my class starts here and my class ends here that's right so now I want to create few constructors for my class A okay so you know that the constructor name and the class name will be always same right so let's start creating the constructor for our class A okay so the first constructor that I'm going to create will be a default constructor right so I'll say A which is my class name and this is my constructor name and okay so this is my default constructor right so I'll write here a print statement system that I would print ln and I'll say uh, inside default constructor okay so this is my default constructor right so now let's create another constructor for our class a which accept an integer as its argument okay so let's create another constructor here I'll say a and again it accept an int variable as its argument so I'll say int I'll give a variable name i and it starts here is ends here and I have a print statement here System that I'll do print ln and I'll say inside int param constructor. Okay, that's good. So it looks good, right? It has two constructor. One constructor is default constructor, no argument here, and one constructor is uh, will accept an integer as this argument, right? So now let's go ahead and create some objects for our class A using these constructors. Okay. Uh, so to create the objects, I need a main method, right? So let's write a main method right here. I don't have any space here, so I'll use this part. Okay. I don't have any space here as well, so I'll wrap my class up over here. Okay. So now let's create a main method. So I'll say public static void main string array argument. Okay. And let's wrap this up. Fine. So now let's create an object for our class A using the default constructor. So I'll say A A1 equal to new A. Right? So while compiling, the JVM will check. Uh, is there any default constructor available here 
yes is available so it will go inside this and print this statement so our output will be uh, inside default constructor right inside uh, default constructor whatever written here okay so now let's try to create another object using this constructor right so I'll say a a2 equal to new a of if I want to use this particular constructor, I want to pass an integer variable, right? So I'll pass here 10, right? Now again, this constructor will be called and this particular line will be printed in the console. So inside, in param of the constructor, this line will be printed in the output, okay? So guys, what we understand from here, whatever constructor we are using while we are creating the object, the same constructor, the matching constructor is getting caught, right? For example, here I'm using the default constructor, so default constructor is getting caught. Here I'm using the, you know, uh, int param constructor, so the int param constructor is getting caught. But what if, if I want to call multiple number of constructor while creating a single object? So what I mean by that is, if I want to use one or two or three or four constructor while I'm creating a single object, then how can we do that? And for that, we need to tag the help from this keyword, okay? So, what I want here is, whenever I'm creating the A class object using the default constructor, I want to use this constructor as well as this constructor. So in the time of the single object creation, I want to use both this and this constructor, okay? And as I said, for this, we need to use this keyword, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So here, what I want to do, I want to write this, okay? So this, and I want to call this constructor, right? So if you want to call this constructor, the first thing you need to observe here is what thing that you need to pass inside its parameters, what it accept. It accept an int value, right? So just write here any int value. Suppose I'm writing 10, right? So right now, our no argument constructor is having a this call and is calling a constructor which accept integer as its argument. So is there any constructor present here? Yes. So the control flow will come here. First, this particular constructor will be executed. Then flow will again go back to here. Then the rest of the line will be executed. So while you are running this particular program, what will be the output, we'll see it over here. So while you are trying to compile your program, what will happen? Your program flow starts from your main method, right? And the first statement is a1 a equal to new a. And a is your constructor, which is a, which is a default constructor, right? So the flow will come here. So this is the default constructor here. Now, the first line of your default constructor is this, okay? So this particular line is calling another constructor which has 10 edges argument. That means it's the int type constructor, right? is an int param constructor. It is over here. So now the flow will come here. So now this particular constructor is getting called. So what is there inside the system that outer print line? Inside int param constructor. So that should, this will be our output. Inside int param constructor, right? Now after this, there is no line, right? So the flow will again go back to here. So what is there after this particular statement? This particular print line, right? So what is that? Inside default constructor. So inside default constructor will be printed. Inside default constructor, right? So this will be your output first. Inside int param constructor will be printed in your console and then inside default constructor will be printed in your output and this will be your entire output for this particular program. So now you might be wondering what next? So now let's get our hands dirty by doing some more code right here. 
let's make this program more complicated let's have another constructor right over here and let's try to form a chain of constructor so I'm going to create another constructor right here which will have uh, two arguments inside it let's say one argument is it one argument is double so guys I'm creating another constructor right over here called uh, double D and it has two arguments one is double one is int I'll say int I and I'll have a print statement right here system.out.println and it has inside double int param constructor okay so now I have another constructor which accept a double and int value okay while you're using this particular constructor so as of now the default constructor is calling the int param constructor right so now what I want to do the int param constructor should call the double int param constructor so if I need to do that what I need to do I need to use the this keyword right so I'm using this here so I'm writing this and inside this what I need to write inside this what I need to write which particular constructor I'm calling I'm calling the double in constructor right so there is two arguments the first one is double the second one is int right so let's put this inside the parenthesis of this okay the first one will be double so I write 10.12 the second one will be int so I'll write 10 right so now what will happen now tell me what will be the output so let me remove this so guys now let's see what will be the output of this particular program okay so first I'm trying to create my A class object right here and I'm using the default constructor so straight away the flow comes to the default constructor right here now this default constructor has this statement in it and it is looking for a particular constructor which has int as its argument right so is there any constructor which has int as its argument right here yes so the flow straightway comes here from here the flow will come here right now again there is a this statement right here and it's looking for a constructor which has a double and a int as its argument so is there any other constructor which says double and int as its argument yes it is right here so the flow from here comes here okay so now is there any other this right over here no so whatever the lines is there inside this particular constructor will be executed so there is only one line over here so what is that inside double int param constructor right so this will come here first as the output double int param constructor guys I'm using my shorthand right here I don't have much space to write over here so the full statement will be printed right inside double int param constructor to here so now again once the work of this is finished it will go back to here because this is the constructor which called this constructor now after this statement whatever the line is there it will be executed so it is there int inside int param constructor right so this will be printed over here inside int param constructor okay so after that is there anything right over here no so the work for this particular constructor is finished so again this will go back to the calling constructor so because this is the constructor which called this constructor so here whatever line is there after this that will be executed so inside default constructor so it will be over here inside default constructor right so your output will be first inside double int param constructor then int param constructor then inside default constructor and this will be the total output 
for your program right so guys this is it if you understand this particular program then you almost understood constructor training